Being a smart contract developer, have you ever wondered that how you can minimize the gas fee of your smart contract? Whatever code I have found on the different blockchain networks, I found that they all focus on the security aspect of the smart contract, which is absolutely perfect. But when it's come to optimization for the gas, because you know that when you will deploy a smart contract, you have to pay gas fee for that. And that gas fee is totally dependent on your smart contract, the variables you have used. So how you can minimize the gas cost, no matter in which blockchain network you are deploying a smart contract, whether it's Ethereum, Polygon, Solana. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. In this video, I'll cover my 13 points, which I personally follow when I write smart contract and that reduces the smart contract gas fee. Okay. So before I take you straight away into those 13 tips, I just want to give you a quick note that the solidity version, which I have used for testing all the smart contract, which I have written for checking the gas, <laughs> for checking the gas price, I use solidity version 0.5.4 okay so just to keep that thing in mind because whatever data i'm going to share in this video that's going to be related with this solidity version 0.5.4 and the guys price might be different when you use different solidity versions but it's going to be more or less same okay so what i have done i have written the smart contract and i have tested in the remix id and then i'm telling you all this thing number one try to avoid event in your smart contract because when you have argument in your contract, one argument will cost you 750 gas. If you have two argument, it will cost you 1125 gas. So the more argument you will have in your contract, the more gas price you have to pay. And there are other factors also involved in this, like the index value, the data size. So these are the additional factors which also influence the gas price which you have to pay in the smart contract. To give you the practical hand of this, what I have done, I have written a simple smart contract. And in this smart contract, I have two functions. One is no event and the second one is has event. Okay. So in the first function, you can see that I'm paying 318 gas fees when I'm deploying the smart contract. But on the other hand, when I'm deploying this has event function, I'm paying close to 1379 gas fee. And this is happening because of this event. As you can see, we have an event here. So what I have done, I have a taken a straight variable called C. And in this function, in the very first function, I'm taking two variables. And this is a UNT type A and B. And then I'm adding together and I'm assigning to C. And same thing I'm doing here as well, but I'm adding this extra event. So because of this event, I'm paying way much gas fee. So it's always very important that you have to look at your code, whether this event is important or not. So in this scenario, I don't think that we need to have an event. So why we should pay extra gas fee for that? So these are the things you have to keep in mind. You should always check your functions and event and check that how many, how much gas fees you are paying for a particular function for a particular variables. Okay. So this is the point number one. Now let's move to the next one. Point number two, you should always replace your byte array with byte x because it's cheaper. And since byte array add 31 padding bytes between the element and always use one of the value types like byte one to byte 32 because they are much cheaper. But on the other hand, when you use that byte array, it costs a little higher than the byte x. So that's the data type you have to keep in mind when you define your variable in the smart contract. So whenever you take any byte array you set, you should try to convert it to byte x. And point number three that you can change and replace your string data type to byte x because byte x can be used as an alternative of string. And it's better to convert to byte x for efficiency perspective as long as a string length is less than 32 characters. So if the string is less than 32, then you can use byte x. And if it's higher than that, then you can go with a normal string. So in my solidity code, I have these two functions and you can see that in the first function, I'm using string and in the second function, I'm using bytes 32 and both the character, both the string is same. Hello world and hello world. But in the first function, I'm paying close to 599 gas fee. But on the other hand, when I'm deploying with this byte 32, I'm paying 196 gas. So you can see that in this way, you can save a lot of gas fee. OK, so always try to replace your string to byte array because you can use it as an alternative if your string is less than 32 number four try to define your struct tightly in a proper order so what do i mean by pack struct tightly so here what i have done here i have taken two smart contract and both the smart contract as it is both are the same one okay but there are a couple of difference in the 
struct the way we have defined so we have this functions we have this back functions and both the functions are same but there is a difference in the order we define the struct so here you will have notice one thing here we are paying like eight two five six five gas fee and this number is really huge this has like close to six character and this has close to five so this number is really high and this is because we are paying less share because here we have defined our struct in a proper order which follow the evm machines protocol and in that way we are paying less so let's let's see what what happening here so here what i have done here i have taken this unt variable which is a 32 byte and h is 8 so i'm defining the unt variables on the top then followed by string and finally i'm adding my boolean data type if you follow this structure in your struct you will pay always less but on the other hand when i'm defining my boolean on the top i'm paying high because boolean is not taking the entire 32 bytes it's taking the portion of it and the remaining portions are getting vacant so other the other data type is going to try to fit in that and because of that we are paying high amount here so always try to define the struct in this order followed by unt then string then you can follow by the boolean type okay and that's how you have to define the like your struct that will save you gas number five is assert for error in your smart contract this is a simple smart contract and this i have these two functions so the first function is called assert and this we are having this asset and we are checking our conditions so if the condition pass will execute the code otherwise it will throw an error so in this assets when you are using the asset instead of required we are paying close to like sixth digit gas fee but on the other hand in the other function you can see that when we are deploying the smart contract and we are using this required functions and we are checking the conditions and one if it fails here we are paying only 382 gas fee so that's why i call this asset is a gas eater it takes a lot of gas when it will throw an error so it's always better to use require instead of asset because it will eat because it will eat all the gas but here in the other hand when you use the required you pay very less gas fee and number six is the function order which you define in the smart contract that's really affect that how much gas fee you will pay because in the smart contract there is a difference in the order of the functions each positions will have an extra 32 gas the order is depend on the method or the id so if you rename the frequent access function to more really method id you have you will save gas cost so when you have a function in the contract and that is very reusable so always try to give a short names and a short id so every time someone will call the function they have you can save a little gas there number seven is internal function is efficient because sometimes what you have to do is that you have to just look at the variables whatever variables you have defined and you have a function to look at those variable you're not doing any changes there you're just trying to access the variable and see okay so on those situation so it's always better to use memory to get the reference of the data there you will not pay any gas fee. number eight is activate optimizer so before you deploy your smart contract it's very important that you should activate optimizer when you compile the code okay so what if you want to deploy a smart contract and you want to be cheaper at the time of deployment and later you want to charge high gas fee for making those any functional call in the smart contract so in such situation what you can do you can define the optimize run variables close to one so when you define as a one you have to pay less gas fee and later you can provide the higher value to the same optimizer and that will start charging higher gas fee so this is how you can do the optimization of the contract for taking the less gas fee and the higher gas fee and number nine is not always use external libraries so if a functions you have in a smart contract visit which is a cheaper and the same function you are getting from external library so in those situation always use the internal function not include external library because sometimes what happen you don't know what kind of variables they have defined in the smart contract for that particular functions and that always take the gas price little higher than the normal one which you will pay when you will have the same function in your own smart contract so when it's very important then only you have to use external libraries otherwise you can write your own functions so to give you the practical hand so there is a library called open zeppelin which allow you to build smart contract very fast and there are a couple of functions in that there is a function called counter 
so that function is that function work is to do only these three tasks increasing decreasing and giving the actual number so you can easily able to add that kind of function in your smart contract why you should include external function for that and that will cost you a little higher than the normal one which you will pay if you have the same function in the same contract so always use inbuilt functions unless or until it's not very important to use external library and number 10 is you should always try to compress the data which you take from the user who interact with your smart contract because what happened when you do a normal transactions on that time you pay close to 21000 way as a gas fee but that gas fee will increase it depends on the data size okay so if you want to if you want to send a uh, one byte data and that you have to pay close to 68 gas fee but if but on the other hand if the byte is this in this scenario you have to pay only four gas fee so you can see the difference between the data types and the compress input okay so you should always try to compress the input data type which you take from the user who interact with your smart contract and you can use other libraries for it or you can write your own functions in your smart contract to do so okay that will save you a little bit gas and number 11 is short circuiting rule so what exactly it is in every program when you define a functions it has some sort of short circuiting and the same things goes into the solidity programming because when you define conditions like or and that's create short circuiting so for example you have two statement and in that two statement you are checking if the function a is true or whether the function b is true if any one of these functions are true then execute this code so this is the simple operations you are doing where you are comparing checking for the two statement for true if any one is true in that scenario you are executing the code but here I want you to focus that when you are defining this kind of conditions, this kind of operations, so you have to look at the data type of the functions which are using. For example, there is a function called f, x, okay, there is a function called x and there is a function called y. So the data types are used in the function x are if that data type is really huge, then definitely it's going to take a, take a high cost because first that function will get tested whether it's true or not. If it's true, then the second function is not going to execute at all because your condition is fulfilled and the code will run. And if it's fail, then the second function will execute. So you should always try to put those functions which has less data types variables for front and then check the higher data types in later. In this way, you can easily able to save gas. So that's the very technical things which most of the developer don't keep in consideration because the placement of the data types and the placement of the function order and the data type you are using inside the functions that define that how many cash fee you're going to pay because whenever you interact with the functions in the smart contract you will do some sort of transactions and that transaction will cost you gas fee so you should always try to keep those functions later those have higher data types so those functions like have a struct has an event so these functions will cost you higher gas fee because they have an event and i show you the event example at the top where we have paying almost four times compared to the normal functions so those kind of function you should try to keep later not forward okay and the final one is external functions are very effective when the data type is large so to give you the practical example what i have done i have taken 320 bytes of data and the gas cost were exactly the same between the public function and here you can see in the code so these are the two functions public access and in turn external access in the both these functions i'm receiving the data and both the gases required 618 gas for this extra public and for this and for external as well so when you have large chunks of data it's always better to use external functions because when you call data from your own smart contract that will cost you higher gas fees so it's always better to make it public and access data from the public sources. These are the 13 points you have to keep in mind as a developer to optimize your smart contract. So you would not pay higher gas fee. Okay. If you do this practice. So if you do all these things, I would take the guarantee that you will save a lot of gas fee. So because when you deploy a smart contract, you have to pay gas fee. And you know that if you deploy a smart contract on Ethereum blockchains, there you have to pay the gas cost is really high because the ethereum currency is really 
high right now and you will pay you have to pay a lot of money for deploying your smart contract so these are the couple of points if you keep in mind while developing your smart contract it will save a lot of money and it will keep your code secure for future vulnerabilities and save a lot of money so hope you have found this 13 points valuable and if you want to know anything else regarding any topic do leave in the comment section i'll try to come up with this video so i build a couple of projects on my youtube channel so if you are new to my channel you and you want to learn about the solidity programming and web3 development so i will link this project in the i button on the description so you guys can follow where i have explained that how you can write the proper smart contract and where we have focus on the gas fee optimization security so that's all you can able to find and I hope that will help you to become a, a Web3 developer. So that's it in this video. Hope to like and subscribe my channel. That will motivate me to come with this new videos and help you guys also and help myself as well.